Hi guys, this video you're about to watch was actually filmed back in April, but I promised this video about three years ago, so I thought let's upload it anyway, even though it has been quite a few months. So if some things don't make sense, know that it was back in April. Thank you. Let's start. Hand cream. First things first. Hello everyone and welcome. It's nice to sit and film again. I haven't filmed in a little while because I had some videos pre-filmed. I call them pre-filmed, but I filmed them with the intention to upload them on time. And you know how that goes. I have kind of been uploading in an all over the place order. Hopefully things will start to be back in an order. We're trying, we're trying. I am not feeling my best today. You might be able to tell, <laughs> but I'm pushing through. I am pushing through. I woke up with a cold sore this morning, which is always a nice surprise. But life is good. You know what? Life is good. The sun is shining. It's finally starting to feel like summer. The trees do not have leaves yet. They might have by the time you watch this video. They're about to fall. All of them. It's getting warmer. You can smell the summer in the air and I love that. I should not live in Norway. I love warm weather so I don't know why I live here. Anyways, let's get into the video. My intros tend to be very long, <laughs> but I feel like I'm catching up with you guys, so I, I like that. Anyways, today I am filming a full face with my cheapest makeup. It took me about an hour <laughs> to compare the prices and to find the most affordable products that I have, and I made a list. I will be including pricing this time. I mostly found my prices from Sephora and Ulta, just to kind of keep things consistent, although most of the products are not. From Sephora and Ulta. I don't know if you remember but a while ago I made a video where I did a full face with my most expensive makeup and I told you in that video that I will also be doing a full face of my cheapest makeup and that video was uploaded three years ago. That's how a while ago it was. But you know what? Better late than never, right? So that's what we're doing today. I have all of my products here and I'm gonna start. But wait. Now I am a beauty girl. Okay, <laughs> let's start. I just put sunscreen on. I'm drinking my cold coffee, as always, which used to be warm. So I'm gonna start with primer and I kind of have two primers. So this is the Catrice Prime and Fine Multi-Talent Fixing Spray. Prepares the skin, improves makeup wear, refreshes complexion. And it's long lasting, it says here. So as far as I understand, this is supposed to be both a primer and a setting spray. Anyways, so I'm gonna start with this one, kind of an all over the face primer. And I actually bought this one a few months ago in Spain, actually, and I haven't really used it. So today is... <laughs> is my chance to use it. So I do have two primers because the other primer that I have is this NYX Angel Veil Skin Perfecting Primer and this is kind of like a silicone primer but I quite like this primer. I don't like the pure silicone primers. This one has kind of a nice consistency and uh, it works well on my skin. It has this nice white creamy consistency but I don't want to use this all over my face because I don't feel like I need it. I'm only gonna use it on my T-zone because I'm actually having quite a few small bumps in my forehead and I get those sometimes and it's kind of annoying but it happens. So I kind of want to smooth out my skin here and also this is nice for like the nose area where the pores are a little bit larger and smile lines, you know. So I don't want to use this all over the face. So that's why I use two primers and they are the most affordable primers that I have. Catrice is a very, very affordable brand and NYX is, yeah, quite affordable too. It's drugstore. I quite like how this primer applies. It does a good job at filling in whatever imperfections that I have on the skin and it makes a smoother base basically. I need a mirror. Here I am doing a full face of my most affordable products and using a Marc Jacobs bronzer as a mirror. But what can I do? It has a huge mirror. It is what it is. <laughs> it kind of mattifies the area a little bit but nothing too much. It's a little bit too dark. Open a little bit my window. Well, I I don't know. I've noticed that my videos are a little bit overexposed. <laughs> so I'm trying to find the right balance. I've struggled with lighting a lot in the past. I only used natural lighting before because I couldn't really, or I did have a ring light, but uh, I couldn't really afford to have a full studio lighting situation. And it's 
it's definitely better now but yeah i don't know this apartment is kind of weird to film in because it is a very bright apartment it has two big windows but i have to film with my back towards the windows it's not the most ideal situation anyways the rest of my makeup it's kind of glowy which is nice i don't know exactly if this is making any difference we're gonna move on okay so for foundation i actually have a tinted moisturizer all of my other products were high-end so this is the cheapest foundation based product that i have and we're gonna go with it and i've actually been using it quite a bit lately because it's nice for this time it has very light coverage obviously it's a tinted moisturizer i don't mind actually from day to day kind of light coverage and my skin has been doing quite all right except from this small bumps right here what else it's a little bit light for me i am not crazy about this product it's a nice product but will i go out of my way to repurchase it probably not i really don't have any complaints it has light coverage but it is supposed to have light coverage so but honestly <laughs> After using my Fenty skin tint, I don't know, it's, it's kind of hard to <laughs> go back to other products. Kind of set the bar for skin tints or this kind of products, you know? And why am I doing my face before I do my eyeshadow? I don't know. I've been doing this quite a bit lately and it's kind of annoying because I used to always do my eyes before I do my base and now I start with this because I usually go with like light eye makeup but sometimes if I want to use something more dramatic I get shadow all over my face and that sucks. Okay, I'm gonna do a little bit more. Honestly, I don't even remember what my look with my most expensive makeup was. I thought about doing something similar to that to kind of compare cheap and expensive if there is a huge difference, but can't be bothered. And I don't think I will be able to do that look, whatever that look was, which again, I haven't seen it, with the eyeshadow palette that I have. And you'll see why in a sec. So that, as you can see, kind of evened up my skin tone. It gave me very little coverage, but I like how my skin looks. It applied fine on top of the primer. It's all right. It's fine. I mean, it's a nice product, but it doesn't wow me. I'm going over it with a sponge just to remove any streaks. I almost always do that. I need to wet this one a little bit more. BRB. <laughs> Okay, so my face is feeling a little bit like, you know, that feeling where a little bit tight. I think it's a primer. I might have applied a little bit too much. I did get a little bit too much product out. I wanted to use all of it. Okay, moving on. I'm gonna do eye primer because I will be doing my eyeshadow very soon. If you see anything white on my hair, it's dry shampoo <laughs> because I haven't washed it in a, in a few days now. So don't judge me, please. I don't tend to use dry shampoo very often because I don't like the feeling of it on my hair. I have not found a dry shampoo where you apply it and you don't feel it in your hair. It basically really makes your hair feel clean. I feel like when I apply dry shampoo to my hair, no matter what, I have tried quite a few different ones, it feels like I have dry shampoo on my hair. I mean, it doesn't feel as greasy as before but it feels heavy like I have products. So if you have any suggestions of a dry shampoo that it's amazing then uh, leave it down below. I did I think saw on a TikTok that you're supposed to apply it before your hair gets very greasy so it might have something to do with that. I don't know. Anyways eyeshadow primer I am using my Milani eyeshadow primer. <laughs> I've actually started to quite like this eyeshadow primer since I did my do eyeshadow primers work video and uh, I've been using it ever since actually. <laughs> Some of them do work. I guess. I've been enjoying it. I haven't been using concealer that often. I like this because after it dries down, it doesn't stay very sticky like the other two eyeshadow primers that I tried. So who knew? Who knew that I would not use concealer as an eyeshadow base, basically. It has a tiny, tiny bit coverage. But again, I like it that it kind of dries down completely and your eyeshadow does not stick when you try to blend it out it does not get patchy i don't like that sometimes it's nice if you're using one shade all over the lid and you kind of don't really want to blend out the edges that much but i usually do want to blend out the edges <laughs> anyways i woke up with a migraine today did i tell you that sucks but now i'm feeling quite better but i still feel 
my head a little bit heavy but i had to film i wanted to film i'm gonna go in with my eyeshadow before i do my concealer just in case i have some fallout then i can at least wipe underneath my eyes so the cheapest eyeshadow palette that i have and i have quite a few palettes it's this one by beauty bay this is the pastels pressed pigment palette it looks like this it is gorgeous this is one of my favorite colored shadow eyeshadows palettes this is the first pastel eyeshadow palette that i come across that it is actually pigmented and the colors show on your skin i love this palette and it is my most affordable palette that's amazing that's a plus plus okay i actually used this palette yesterday i did a look for instagram and i filmed a short video i used this beautiful shade right here i love to use these shadows as a one shadow all over the eye kind of monochromatic look i love this for that what should i use today <sighs> should i do honestly i don't know i didn't think this <laughs> i kind of want to do <laughs> i mean all of them are kind of crazy colors but i want to go out for a walk later because the weather is so beautiful and you know i still live in norway and people look at you kind of crazy if you have little bit of a different thing wearing <laughs> so i don't know i need to think about it i have decided to do kind of a halo eye kind of a mixture of these three shades we'll see where it will take us okay i'm gonna start with this pink will i be able to go out with this makeup we'll see i'll go out anyway i'm just gonna wear sunglasses anyway so why am i worrying let's do this so starting with that shade, Lovesick it's called, nice name. So basically kind of like a halo eye, outer corner and inner corner of the eye. But yeah, the primer kind of dried out, so I should have, since I'm using matte shadows and I want them to really show, I should have not let it dry so much, but they are still showing. Take a blending brush with the same color, blend out the edges. Are people still interested in tutorials? I don't really watch that many tutorials anymore, but sometimes I do. You know what? I like actually watching tutorials on um, Instagram stories and sometimes on YouTube too actually, but I find myself still learning new techniques and new stuff that I want to try out. So there is still use for tutorials guys. There are still things to learn. Hopefully there will always be new stuff to learn and new techniques, but I'm interested to hear your opinion. Like what do you think about tutorials? And always let me know what do you want to watch. These eyeshadows are so good quality. I love them. When Beauty Bake came out with their own brand, not gonna lie, I thought it was gonna be not that amazing quality because the packaging, it's not like the most amazing. I mean, it's very basic because also the prices are quite low, you know? But after getting this palette, I was really, really impressed. And I kind of wanted to get some other palettes too, like the small square ones that I got. I actually made an order, I think a couple of years ago, and it never came. It got lost in the mail. And it was a basic, like, um, neutral shadow. I was like, I don't really need it. I obviously got a refund, but I thought about buying it again. But I'm like, I have so many eyeshadow palettes and uh, I didn't end up getting it. And uh, I do want to try more stuff from Beauty Bay because the prices are so good. And I've been really impressed with this eyeshadow palette. So I'm going in with this purple or lilac shade. It's called Euphoria. I am not watching the show, by the way. I kind of watched a recap video on YouTube where it kind of explained everything. I do not have HBO, so... I haven't seen it. But after that recap, it kind of made me want to watch it. What do you think about it? I know everybody's obsessed with it. I am happy that I did not grow up like that. That's too much crazy stuff going on with those kids. Okay, now, can you see how pigmented that lilac color is? Like, tell me. Tell me which other eyeshadow, pastel lilac eyeshadow does this. Tell me. Beautiful. Beautiful. I've actually seen some bad reviews of this palette, not that many though, and I wondered why. Okay, okay, enough of that. Okay, so I was thinking of getting a thin brush, like this for example. This is the Spectrum and KJH brush. It's long, which is gonna give you room to blend, and it's not very stiff, so let's try that. So I'm getting this purple shade, Daydream. And I do not want a lot of it. I just want a little bit. Oh, it is so beautiful. What is this shade of purple called? Lavender. Yes, this is a lavender purple. I'm gonna put just a little bit on the outer corner. I look like I'm going to Coachella. <laughs> and now I 
think I'm gonna leave it at this. I'm gonna take again my blending brush and kind of blend out everything together. And I'm gonna do my concealer and then put this shade all over my lower lash to make a little bit of a contrast, you know? Coffee is finished. I feel like I always have to drink something. Okay, concealer. My most affordable concealer at this moment is this one by Dos of Coros. This is a mid year hue concealer. I only have two concealers at the moment. Is this or the Hourglass concealer? And obviously this was the most affordable choice. They're both high ends, I know, but that's all I have. I am running out of concealers. I truly need to buy some new concealers because this is too light for me right now it's a little bit matte and obviously it's not gonna match that well with my very light coverage tinted moisturizer that i have because this is very good coverage but that's all i have Ugh, i need to buy new base products like look at this i'm not gonna put more because i'm not gonna put more my concealer game is not the strongest so i am trying different stuff although this concealer has very good coverage i still see some darkness and i don't know if it's like the shape of my under eyes that gives me shadow or it's my skin discoloration or i don't know what it is but yeah i am trying to use less product so that it creases less because i truly do not like setting my under eyes i have this spot right here on my eye that is so difficult to cover the product does not want to stick there like it is looking a little bit cakey not gonna lie i feel like this concealer is a little bit heavy for me right now i just really got used to the creamy shape date concealer and i'm like i need a similar concealer i'm not doing very well with matte concealers anymore i don't know what it is i'm kind of giving up on it because it's kind of annoying me <laughs> anyways so i'm gonna go back with the shadow i'm using this brush from a anastasia palette one end of the brush is quite nice i haven't been really putting a shadow on my under eyes lately i love that shadow on the lid but nothing underneath look because i feel like it makes your eyes look a little bit bigger but sometimes i want some color there so before the concealer dries completely i'm putting this color underneath was this a bad idea maybe honestly mascara will fix everything I hope. Shoot, I need to charge my computer. I always need to charge something. My YouTuber level is not, it's not there yet. But I see other YouTubers, much bigger YouTubers, that are kind of the same. <laughs> I kind of look sicker <laughs> than I started. Let's hope thing will fix with a mascara. Uh, I need to charge my damn computer. Okay, we're back and charging. Uh, uh, I'm not crazy about this makeup look. Let's move on. So I'm gonna move on to the rest of my face and um, my cheapest bronzer, highlighter and blush are all powder products and as you know I mostly use cream products nowadays for the past three years <laughs> and especially if I'm using like a tinted moisturizer or a skin tint I prefer to go with a cream product because it's still kind of sticky a little bit but it kind of has dried down more than before at least but yeah it's still a little bit tacky uh, so it's not the most ideal thing to use a powder on top of it because I, I am not about to powder all of my face I want that glow because we're all about the glow you know it is what it is these are the most affordable products that I have so I have to include them so for bronzer I'm using the revolution bronzer reloaded in the shade take a vacation I really want to take a vacation gosh I haven't used a like, powder bronzer in a long time so I don't even know what brush to use okay I'm gonna use this Fenty brush to kind of contour a little bit to give a little bit shape to my face first and then I might switch to more fluffy Brush. This is a baked brush. It's not super pigmented, so I'm taking quite a bit of product. I'm loading up my brush. But still, I need to be a little bit careful again because I use a tinted moisturizer. So let's do this. I am so used to having cream products, and uh, okay, this is <laughs> more pigmented than I remember, or maybe it's just sticking more to my skin. Yeah, but cream products just give the face so much more glow than powder products <laughs> that's so much okay changing brush this is a juno and co brush very pretty i like this bronzer it's very nice not my best bronzer work i'm really not liking this makeup <laughs> you know what i might remove it before i go out when i change brush it's not that pigmented it's much nicer. Give a light wash of color all over the face. I'm gonna go a little bit down because the tint moisturizer is lighter. So kind of even things up a little bit. Okay. Um, 
<laughs> what am I doing? I don't even know. I'm gonna use the same thing as a nose contour because I think the shade works just fine. Yeah, let's tone that down a little bit. Now for the blush. My cheapest brush lashes are these ones from Essence and they are so good. I love these blushes so much and they are so small and very easy to travel with. I had four of them <laughs> before but one of them broke as you might have seen from my project tampon. Yeah I think I want to go for this one. This is, I don't think they have this one anymore or they call different. It used to be the satin touch blush and now it's just called the blush. This one is in the shade satin love. Let's take it cleanish brush and I'm gonna dip it in. I actually from all the powder products that I used to use powder blush is the one that I miss the most because I have a lot of nice powder blushes sometimes I miss them. I love me I truly love cream blush but it's nice to have a powder blush sometimes because they are sometimes a little bit easy to work with not always depending on the blush look at this beautiful and has a little bit more color i love this that's nice and then for highlighter i'm using this wet and wild mega glow highlighting powder in the shade precious petals i don't like how powder highlighters sit on top of powder products because i feel like it just sits on top of the skin i'm so used with cream highlighters or at least having a cream highlighter base on top of a powder highlighter yeah you'll probably see now like Okay, this is very glowy, <laughs> as you can see, but like it's kind of sitting on top of my face. It's very creamy and nice highlighter, but I much prefer to... Okay, I went a little bit crazy, true, but I like to have kind of a seamless glow to my face. I don't want to have a highlighting strip on my face. Kind of went everywhere, but my only... <sighs> this highlighter is so good. The only positive thing about this, my only hope for this thing, using a powder highlighter on top of just powder is to put a lot of setting spray and then it will melt down and look a little bit more seamless because if i was to leave it like this although again this highlight is actually really nice but if i was to leave it like this it looks a little bit not as well blended or not as seamless as i want it to be so a setting spray usually fixes this kind of situation so let's do a little bit more blush I guess. Honestly this highlighter is looking very nice. I don't know if it's because of the ring light but I'm liking it. I applied it quite low. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. So I'm going in with my spray again to try and fix everything and then I'll do my brows and mascara. Mm, the <laughs> this does not taste good. The mist is okay but it's a little bit aggressive. <laughs> like look at this literally drench myself on setting spray because I want everything to melt together. There's not sun coming in in the background. We're gonna ignore that. I'm my fan. I got this one in Thailand actually. It has elephants on them. Quite cute. I might have gone a little bit too crazy with it but this is what I like. Like right now it looks a little bit oily almost and um, it hasn't dried down completely but going over it with a sponge it's gonna make it even better. I'm liking it now. It was starting to look a little bit too matte for my liking because of all of these powder products, but setting spray saves the day. Honestly, I don't know what people did before setting spray and people includes me too. I didn't always know or I didn't always use setting spray. Brows. Okay, let's move faster because this video is getting too long. I always think that tutorials will be faster than talking videos, but they're not always the case. The cheapest brow product that I have is this pencil from LA Girl. The Shady Slim pencil in the shade Brunette. But I will be using it in combination with other things. This is a nice, very slim, as the name suggests, brow pencil. And it has a spoolie, which is always nice. Haven't used this in a long time brow pencils although i never find them precise enough for my liking they are so fast and i do like to use them from time to time like yeah even if i left my brow like this with a little bit brow gel this is good enough and it took like two seconds i have been underestimating <laughs> brow pencils in the past i was like ah nah brow pomade this is the way to go but that was years ago <laughs> After using the Anastasia Deep Brow Pomade for years because of my project tampon, I truly appreciate a fast brow product. 
Like, honestly, I'm not being super precise. I'm just filling in to kind of have an even-ish color and blending it out with my spoolie. And now, for more precision, give that to me. <laughs> I'm going in with a brow pen. It's my favorite way to do my brows or at least to give some precision to the end of my brows because I'm missing some hair there and I need to draw a few hair. So my cheapest brow pen is the Revolution Dark Brown Hair Stroke Pen. I think this is the shade to the dark brown. This is a very pigmented and it doesn't blend out very easily so I gotta be very careful with this. So I need to concentrate. Okay, I remember it being more pigmented when I first used it. Let's blend it out. Yeah, see, it's not very easy to blend out. Uh, and it's not really matching this shade, so I'm not gonna apply more. I only used it like once. This did not turn out very well. I'm gonna leave it like this. Wow, this sucks. Okay, okay, okay. I'm going in with brow gel and I only have two brow gels. They are both high-end. The cheaper one of them is the Benefit 24 Hour Brow Setter. One of my favorite brow gels. Has really good hold. It's not shiny. I do not like brow gels that are shiny. It's not my best brow day, but it's not the worst either. That's it for brows. Mascara, finally. <laughs> Let's make this eye look look better. <laughs> I'm gonna curl my lashes with my expensive eyelash curler. It's from Sishelo. I love it. It's so good. Mascara. I recently repurchased this one, the L'Oreal Lash Paradise Mascara. I haven't used it in a long time because I had different mascaras that I've been trying for a while. I actually bought a two set at the airport. This is, I think, like the American packaging. I did buy it at the airport here in Norway. Why does it need to have a sticker like this when it comes already with a box packaging? Like, I hate those stickers. And now it's sticky. As I was saying, oh, I haven't used this mascara in so long and I love it. I don't remember it smelling like this. Hmm. This kind of has the American packaging because here in Europe, this mascara had a different packaging. Like the mascara itself, also a different name basically, but has a kind of a rose gold color, like peachier than this one. Well, this is more pink. I love this mascara. But it dries very fast. It already feels a little bit dry. But look at the volume, I missed this. Bit clumpy, but I'm okay with that. All right. And I'm gonna put some on my lower lashes too, which I don't usually do. I'm gonna take my, no, not this one, the highlighter. And um, put some on my inner corner. It's nice that it is pinkish. It's gonna look nice with the rest of the look. This highlighter is so buttery and smooth. I haven't used it in a while. Okay then. That's it for the eyes and basically the makeup. Oh, no, no, no. I have lip products. The cheapest lip products that I have is actually from Primark. Where is the lip pencil? You know what? I cannot be bothered. I am gonna take it off in a minute anyway. So this is one project and pan product basically. The Primark lipstick in desert sand. And I only have <laughs> this. This is a bit embarrassing, but we're beyond that now. <laughs> I only have about this much left. I'm gonna use the lip brush for that. Do I even have a lip brush? I'm gonna use this cleanish brush. I've actually used this for eyeshadow, but it's okay. And I'm gonna apply it on my lips without lip liner because I cannot be bothered to find my lip liner. But it is also from Primark and it's actually in the same shade as this. So I guess they are meant to be used together. But yeah, this is a nice lipstick. But it does not smell very well. And um, it would be nice. It would be really nice if it finished. I'm not overlining or anything. I just want to get it over with. It's looking nice. Okay, my camera is about to die. We need to finish this. Okay, so this is the finished look. Honestly, it turned out nice at the end. The eyes are not my favorite, but they're still alright. And I think I can wear this outside. Overall thoughts, I think drugstore has a lot of great products. I'm not gonna lie, for the base, like foundation and stuff like that, I do like higher end products just because they have come out some very nice, good stuff. Yeah, but there are some really good products at the drugstore. Like these blushes are some of my favorites among high end and low end blushes. This highlighter, really nice and smooth. What else? I actually had this powder too, but I did not end up using it. I love this eyeshadow primer. This palette, I love it. 
amazing. This one, yeah, didn't really blow my mind, but it's still a good product. I mean, my face looks nice and the setting spray did actually make everything look much better. This, I'm not crazy about this brow revolution brow pen, but the pencil from um, LA Girl, I've actually have used multiple of this. It's really nice. Overall, some really good products at the drugstore. So if you are on a budget, you can find a lot of amazing products that will look really great on your face and nobody will be able to tell. My base is looking beautiful. So yeah, I guess that's the lesson of today that um, you don't need to spend a lot of money to have great makeup. But I gotta say, when I was looking at the prices, <laughs> a lot of this affordable makeup, they are um, not like super affordable, <laughs> you know, I mean, even like Maybelline and NYX and um, other brands, they're not like super, super affordable, you know, because if you, for example, want to buy like a full face of products, then uh, it will end up being quite a bit at the end but you have other brands like for example essence or wet and wild they are very affordable and even beauty bay the prices are even better i will end this video here i am going out to enjoy the sun i hope you enjoyed this video three years after i promised it let me know your thoughts in the comments down below and like always don't forget to subscribe and uh, give this video a thumbs up and yeah that's it for me thank you so much for watching and i'll see you again later Bye. All right, that's it. Did I forget something? I don't think so. By the way, I'm feeling much better now. So I guess putting a little bit of makeup helped. Okay, bye.